sound of melting snow dripping off the roof is strange. I mean, listen, even a broken clock twice a day. Yep. You got it. Crawling, crawling with locusts. locusts. Oh, what an idiot. Magnesium supplement you rub on your chest to live a happy magnesium rich life. All around you. The hisses and chirps of let them go. fill the musky air. The earthen floor of the shack has been shaped into mounds of mud dotted with little holes. Oh, for God. What an like idiot. skyscrapers, spires of dirt and sand rising. Accommodations for their insectoid inhabitants. Wow, we haven't taken damage in a long time. <laughs> well, detective, it appears you've solved the case. The lieutenant looks around, writes something in his notebook, and turns to you of the locusts for the missing locust case which is a subcase of the imaginary insect case so at least that's going well <laughs> yes precisely what i was thinking stop being so sarcastic Kev, right oh i'm not being sarcastic at all we are making real progress here. <laughs> when someone says they're not being sarcastic it's usually a good sign that they're being very sarcastic you think the insulin indian phasmid is nearby if anything, the presence of the locust points to the opposite. The phasmid did not take the bait from the traps. It was Kuno. The phasmid doesn't exist. But what do I know? Use your powers of deduction. You knew the magic bug was nowhere near here. The phasmid is impairing your judgment. We should talk to Kuno. I'll let you handle the Kuno side of things. Yep. You are doing just fine. I am. Thank okay. you. By the way, have we? Yes. Okay, yeah. I'm trying to remember if we successfully convinced him there was a sexy mystery to the case. <laughs> and then we did, and he complimented us. Where was that ladder bringing us again inside? That's not on the roof, right? Uh, yeah. We got upstairs and then walked around, I think, the, uh, the upper area where we found some some tear. Okay. Fuck, does Kuno care? I know you took the locust from the traps and the cryptozoologist. Yeah. Kuno took the bugs. So what? So it wasn't the phasmid. A wave of disappointment washes over you. Really, Harry? <laughs> I was really hoping it would be a red reed phasmid that ate the locust, not you, Kuno. You say you don't give a fuck about bugs, then you go and build a whole bug town. Yeah! Why steal locusts? Couldn't you find some other pets? It's not bug town. It's the city of locusts. Locusts aren't just bug shit. They come out of the sky like a fucking shadow. Shit descends. That's true. If you ever see video of it, it's pretty fucking scary. Biblical. Literally biblical. Stop! She wails from behind the fence and buries her face in her hands. Oh, lawyer up, Kuno! <laughs> what are you doing? It's shut the fuck up Friday! It is! It is! <laughs> Am I free to go? I won't Why be you detained! I won't be discussing my day with you, officer! I won't, I won't! <laughs> you stop! It's like their fucking night! Local city, night city, city of rage. There's a tug of war over the name of his fantastical city. It's almost too big for his imagination. The girl forces herself to watch again. The corners of her eyes twitching from discomfort. Oh, she hates it. <laughs> city of rage just sounds like a cool part. What are you, some kind of artist now? One of her kids that just wanted to ask... You. Oh, that's how lame it is. Please just don't say you're an artist. Maybe I am an artist. You hear that, everyone? I'm a fucking artist now. <laughs> Did he just say I? Kuno usually calls Kuno Kuno. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's getting your personality. He's fighting himself. He's doing it. 
Hold on. Did I hear you right? You said I? Kuno made Kuno. Kuno says whatever the fuck he wants. There are no rules here, pig. He steps closer. I fucking say I when I wanna. And Kuno when I wanna. Kuno's free. Kuno's free to fucking die, bitch. This is what he sometimes does when things get tense. Progress. <laughs> We're getting somewhere. Progress. Great. Making art is a worthy calling. I'm something of an artist myself. You should listen to your friend Kuno. Art's lame as hell. Check out my degree. <laughs> oh my god, Kuno! He's gonna make you totally lame in like three seconds. Don't let him, Kuno. Yo, fuck you, see? Kuno can be what Kuno wants to be. Kuno's his own man. Kuno's free. He tears at the buttons of his shirt, trying to rip them open. They don't give way. Bars. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> Spit it, Kuno. Spit it like a British rapper. <laughs> like grime. The streets. <laughs> Kuno made himself into Kuno. Kuno can make himself into anything. Kuno can make himself into a pig if he wants. Kuno can make himself into a f Kuno doesn't give a shit. Absolute id. Infinite you potential. Don't make yourself into a pig, Kuno. You'll have to take me away. A leaden silence fills the yard. In it, you hear snow melting, dripping from the eaves. Someone closing a window. Are we being too loud? He really is unbound. <laughs> There are no strings on Kuno. So that's what this is about. That depends on the choices you make, young girl. Me and Kuno have discussed this. I promised I won't do that. Say nothing. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, okay. Let's bring that up. You. She disappears entirely behind the fence. For once, the boy is lost for words. He turns completely red now, with splotches of white beginning to appear across his face. Use this momentary confusion to take control of the situation. Good roll. You've got him. Now convince him to leave the cryptozoologist's traps alone. <laughs> really? That's that's what you're going to no. use this moment for? Really? You're not going to try you to turn his life you, around? You oh have my a, God. You have <laughs> a save the child moment, and you're going to use it to tell him to leave the invisible bug studiers be. Stupid beat. rhetoric. Oh, my God. I need you to stop taking locusts from the traps. The cryptozoologists are trying to find something very important. The locusts are bait. I have to ask, what does the city of locusts mean? What's going to happen to the locusts? This is the this is the moment, and we have to talk about this shit. What does the city of locusts mean? It don't mean anything. It's shit. Kuno just likes to focus. Kuno likes to concentrate on shit. Build shit when he's zipping hard. Fuck. He turns his face up to the heavens. Pig, you really shouldn't have fucked with Kuno City. Now it's all fucking lame. <laughs> Kuno's looking off at the sky. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I don't need the locusts anyway. Shit is all lame now. He turns. She was right. Turns towards the fence. The girl's face appears again above the fence. Just long enough to make eye contact with Kuno. What's going to happen to the locusts? Kuno's gonna let the fucking locusts die. Okay now, that's settled. I'd better be off. The fuck are they trying to catch anyway? With the traps? The insulinian phasmid. Huh. <laughs> he recognizes the name. <laughs> Um, no, I don't, I'm not going to enter. Later, Kuno. Oh my god, I can't believe we're going to entertain this fun. Like a sponge, he absorbs it all. Be it Measurehead or Crypto fucking Zoology. You know what an Insulindian Phasmid is? Bitches think Kuno doesn't know shit. The fuck out of here. Kuno's tired of this shit. <sighs> God. Wild. 
fuck does Kuno care? You're... Kuno doesn't fucking care. Kuno knows. Kuno knows. But he doesn't fucking care. He's too cool to care. He's too cool to care. Kuno fucking knows. He just doesn't care. You're lame. Right? Oh. In case you didn't know. Wow. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. That's amazing. Oh, man. Anything new with this? Right. Delta Commerce Center. This must be the name of the Doom commercial area. I don't suppose so. Hmm. Um. Hmm. <laughs> we can let that's crazy. Morel know that the Red Devil won't be touching the traps anymore. That's pretty crazy. <sighs> Jesus. <laughs> For a second. Oh. Huh. Yeah. I like. Oh. <laughs> uh, Them all. <laughs> Kuno's got a moose. Kuno oh, wants to be the very best, like no one ever was. Crypt Hello, Officer. Mon. I think I almost have it. A new trap design, that is. I know you're skeptical, but I have a good feeling about this. Had a chat with this kid, Kuno. He promised to stop stealing the locusts. So he was just a child. He purses his lips, crestfallen. Thank you for telling us, sweetie. This is good news, right? It means we can try again. That was 30 experience. She acts chipper, but something's changed in her tone. A hidden worry. Something is secretly gnawing at her confidence. It's not this Kuno kid or the missing locusts. It's something else. Could it be that their, your first instinct was to believe that... It escaped the trap, and then upon revelation that it was not at all what you had just put your faith in, you are forced to confront the frivolousness with which you update your beliefs. Mm, I'd say she is confronting the inevitable march of death after learning that all of this is BS. Yeah, you're right. We just need to restock the empty trap. Then we'll need to inspect the trap. Oh my god, time. dude. And then maybe we can. If it's... You do have to look at someone and then look at their age and go, they've spent their entire existence, which is longer than you, in this mode. Yeah. What the fuck power do you have? Words? You think words are going to pull that out? No. Nah. You think words can do it? No, nah, that, that's a cork. <coughs> Aging cryptozoologist breaks into a hideous coughing fit. And yes, obviously, the pale is real. And yes, obviously, there's a world of crazy fucking floating Isolas that we don't understand. Thus, anything is possible. And yes, apparently, we need to pay attention to the ending and the credits. He has a 38 degree <laughs> fever. His resilience has given way. He has a fever. <laughs> Moving on. Darling, I told you to take it easy. <laughs> You're getting sick. Maybe it's time to go home. Oh, finally. You're right, you're right. We can come back next season when it's warmer. Hey, there you go. There you go. That's just something people tell themselves when they fail. There won't be a next season. Not for this. Find a phasmid or admit defeat, people. <laughs> really, authority? Man, I'm really feeling this costing me. I'm really feeling this is costing me time on my main investigation. It's not worth risking your health. You should call it a day and go home. Refuse. I'd offer to help, but I have my own things to do. Refuse. Damn it. Maybe I can still restock the trap for you. Accept. We've come too far to quit. I'm going to restock the trap. Let's do this. Except enthusiastically. I mean, let's leave. Let's let the nice people go on their way. Kim is going to backhand us in the he face. He is. <laughs> but -pow! Let's, let's let the nice people go off passing the torch. Yeah. So that they can at least, like, 
not die in their ignorance or non-ignorance as as the, the <laughs> world would fucking have it is even whatever real or not they're gonna die mm -hmm. so let's send them off we are getting really carried away with this aren't we fine it's better than having these people get pneumonia on the coast yes but after this he wants to see this tale through as much as you otherwise he'd have stopped this already but he cannot let it drag out after sure this. Sure he can. He's mad. <laughs> really? It's too much, officer. <laughs> Starts coughing again. Task. Find the Insulindian Phasmid. The trick is to remember which one it was. Okay. What Morel means is... We're grateful for your help. She nods to her husband. They should slide right down the funnel. Jesus Christ. Thank you again. We would definitely mention you, should this lead to a discovery. I'm not talking co-discovery, of course, but... Uh... Sound mixing, please. Um, yeah, of course, he gets the credit, right? Wow. Co-discovery. You'd be famous. You'd show them all. This does tingle the pleasure center. Mm. This would show them all. We need to get you on that list of discoverers. Why no question is about that. Electro Chem chiming in on this? That's that's Feels a good. That's a weird one. That like a sin. Well, do something good. The fame, the riches. Box with locusts. <laughs> Should we just go dump him on Kuno? <laughs> Cardboard box with several rows of little holes in the lid. But at first glance, the box seems perfectly ordinary. Upon closer examination, it's obvious that it has been prepared with great care. Price. Buck 28. <laughs> no, everything's got a price. Again? I can't believe this shit. Yes, uh, what is it? Oh, look, something is really bugging me. Are we or are we not from the same police station? God damn it, you leave her alone. Keep your weird bullshit to yourself and be professional for once, for fuck's sake. Can I actually help you with something? She looks at you apologetically. Yes, of course, preposterous. I mean, you would remember if they were, right? Yeah, it's not <laughs> right. What's what's the point? Why even bother? <laughs> All right, let's travel. All right. Hello. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? Have you seen a red-haired woman named Ruby around the coast? Nay, I haven't seen anyone lately. Okay, but do you know who I'm talking about? This is my little cinder block town. I know what goes on around here. She's being evasive. She knows something. There was a murder in Martinez. She might be a suspect. We would appreciate your help. Would you now? I know how this world works. And it doesn't work when people tell on each other. Oh, she's not a snitch. Oh, okay, washerwoman. No, she's not a snitch. Washerwoman from the streets? <laughs> Damn. Wow, wow. Dead bodies, though, lady. Nah. You know something. Favo, Favo. She turns around, turns her back to them. I mean, look, go watch the Boondocks episode on snitching for the best message you can take away from that. You know something, we're here to help. This is like when that man locked himself in the woodshed. We just need to help her come out. This isn't about the union, you know. You don't have to worry about retaliation. Hmm. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. 
No, it's not like that man. With him, we called you. Right now, you just arrive by yourself, like a raven plucking at the window glass. But if we don't find her, this whole place will burn down. That would be terrible. I see, you know something, but you've decided not to tell us. Okay, but we'll be back later if we find anything suspicious. There's not much to tell. People come and go. Now, was there something else? I see, ma'am. I hope you don't mind if we look around anyway. You should look around your shack. Maybe she's rented it out to others too. Oh. Huh. That's an interesting thing. Free rental is free rental. I oh, the sea's gonna calm down soon, I can feel it. The wind is turning southeast. What's on your mind, officer? Oh? Who? Looking for a suspect who might have stayed in this neighborhood. Okay. When did this person stay here? Very recently, over the past few days. Might have arrived on Friday. Oh. I've been out on the sea for most of the past week. The weather's been good for fishing, so I usually start at four in the morning. Jesus Christ. Yes, that's the optimal time. Got to make the most of the calm. I've been sleeping like a corpse after. The sea really takes its toll. Now I'm just waiting for the wind to settle to get out there again. Sorry I couldn't help you out. Maybe I can help you find someone else. Really? Are you sure you're not also looking for Nadia Harnan Kaur? Or Ignis Nielsen? Or the Great Lost City of Ace under the waves? I am looking for a lot of stuff, ain't I? A lot of stuff. She concurs with a smile. Yeah, that's what cops do. I'm an agent of unstoppable forces. No one can escape what's coming for them. I guess so. Doesn't feel like a lot to me. I could be doing more. Maybe there's someone missing from your life. I'm just doing my job. Let's change the subject. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> there's plenty missing. But that's too much for even an eager terrier like you to handle. Although you seem very thorough. Tell me, instead, is there something else I can help you with? Thanks, Lillian. Search Light Division. Three hours, 15 minutes. No research bonuses. Missing persons cases just really get to you. It's hard watching people worry about their loved ones. The little nervous movements, the dark rings around their eyes from sleepless nights. And even if there are no loved ones waiting, you like to have all your ducks in a row. And it really bothers you when whole entire people aren't accounted for. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Uh, plus one inland. Caps. Hand eye. Caps. Empathy. Coin. Uh, yeah, I guess we're not... I mean, we're still making money off of... Um, Conceptualization it, it, and ultra-liberal thoughts. Yeah, so this is a little less useful now that the encyclopedia is paying us more. Oh yeah, encyclopedia, that's what I meant, sorry. This is 10 cents, and that's like, you know, show, it's 20, was it? Okay. Ooh, that's cool. And I feel like, um, with the way stats are playing out, like... Those thoughts are, are becoming more... Uh, they're, they're, they're shaping up our character a lot more than uh, some of the mild stats were. At least it feels like. Mm -hmm. uh, can I walk in here and see what is going on? <laughs> Using a thermodynamic expander condenser cycle. Nice. What's this? Hey, there's an interactable there. 
Do we see that? As you look at the floorboards, <sighs> it's a floorboard. in this corner of the shack, it's clear one of them isn't quite level with the others. Yeah, the telltale heart shit. The edge of a floorboard next to it looks scratched. Move the board aside. Hollow space underneath the floorboards is dark and damp. You can barely make out the mixture of sand and sawdust below. What's in here? Nothing particular catches your eye. Looks like more reeds. There might be something hidden inside the sand, though. Something bad. Someone's night thoughts. A last resort. A bad idea. Search through the sand and sawdust. You stick your hand in and start combing through the sand. Dry, not like outside. Fine dust. And then, something hard wrapped in paper. What is it? A small cylindrical object. You pull it out. A bullet. A 9mm bullet, to be exact. Fit for all muzzle loaders of that caliber. Parabellum? The, the bullet isn't for a breech loader like the murder weapon? The floorboard isn't interested. Maybe the washerwoman is. Hmm. You have enough to confront her with. Damn, ask Ruby updated. Ammunition. She's locked and loaded, ready to fight some cops. <laughs> Seems like that's the case, yes. Can you examine the bullet itself? Yep. Wow, wow, wow. So that was underneath the, the rocking chair. <laughs> ready to ready to rock. Uh, Probably an interactive is there. No? Nothing highlighted. Yes, nothing highlighted either. Uh, oh! Um, maybe if you look at the bullets, but then it's not going to give you a description. You know, on the, on the equipped, you've got two bullets. <laughs> nothing more. Okay. Oh. So there was that floorboard. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? Hey, lady. So put the bullets. Damn that girl. She murmurs softly. And without anger, a long and harsh life has taught her not to buckle under pressure. The bullet? The lieutenant turns to you and gives you a little nod, then turns to the washerwoman. You didn't put it there, did you? She did. Gone and hid things in there? She's usually a good tenant, and not a stupid one either. You rented the room to her? Yes. I let my room to that ruby girl. She speaks slowly, wringing out a rag after a long silence. Her hands move into the water bucket, some water sloshes over the edge. As I've done before when she's been in trouble or just looking for solitude, I've made it clear. We welcome all kinds of people here. What was, was this? She came last Friday, left on Monday in a hurry. What has she gotten herself into, that girl? That's for the police to find out. Right there. Please answer each question to the best of your ability. I'm sure we have mm -hmm. a few. The lieutenant takes out his familiar blue notebook. He said she left on Monday. Yes, early with the dogs. Around 8 o'clock, I think. Is the room exactly as she left it? I cleaned it, like I always do. Anything else in there? No. The truth, sire. What is she like, Ruby? She's good company. Knows how to talk to an old woman. At my age, you don't get a lot of quality conversation. So I really appreciate that about her. Did she talk to you much during her last day? No, she was mostly silent this time. Kept to herself. What do you mean? She tried not to let it show, but I could tell she hadn't come to fish. Usually she likes to cast a few lines, but this time she mostly stayed in her room. Where do you think she left the bullet there? Why do you think she left the bullet there? How would I know? She's a gruff one, but not violent. She doesn't go around toting a gun. She looks back towards her shack, thinking. You could ask her about your hunch, that it was a desperate measure. See if she thinks Ruby fits the bill. 
I have a possible explanation in my mind. I do tell. A seagull flies overhead. Obviously a bad omen. It's an exit plan. On second thought, I'd rather not say. It's not something I want to think about. Exit from what? Her life. The world. This. The lieutenant stops writing for a moment. He looks at you, then at the old woman. No, she's a fighter. She tilts her head to the side, looking up at you, deep in thought. She really believes that. I heard she was a heavy drinker with anger issues. You ever witnessed that kind of behavior? Nothing of the sort. Sure, she was no stranger to the bottle. She fit in that way. But I only knew her to have a beer on the beach while watching the sunset. The sun sets for everyone. She isn't what you call a drunk. Even offered me some from time to time. Said it was part of the communal life. But I never saw her lose control of herself the way some people do. Did she have any technical equipment with her, like radio stuff? None that I knew of, though she was into nice music. She once showed me a few mixtape milieu she'd made. She brushes her forehead with the back of her hand. Water drips to the ground. Although I guess she was pretty handy with the mechanical and technical stuff. Even fixed the heater in the shack. You should be thankful for that. Where'd she go? go? I don't know. Further up the coast. She tried to leave quietly, but the hinges on that door screeched like a cat in heat. Woke me up. I heard her rushing in those heavy boots, heading up north. It's a peninsula. She might be trapped. You'll never find her, you know. She knows the coast like the back of her hand. You only just arrived. Her tone is without malice. I wouldn't worry about that, ma'am. We are persistent. Further up the coast we go, then. But that place is huge. She's a needle in a haystack. Wipe your brow. Man, I really was hoping she'd be hiding in this village. <laughs> <laughs> you sure she didn't go somewhere more pleasant and less wet? Are you sure you would rather stay here? Get a nice cozy fire going in the heater? Seems like a better idea to me. She drops the rag in the bucket. It's clean now. The Feld Electric Mural. You feel like you should go look at it again. Step closer this time. I had a few more questions about Ruby. What more do you want to know about that poor girl? Enough questions about Ruby. <laughs> yes. Let's hear those other questions. Me? No one. Just an old washerwoman. Mother called me Isabel, if that's what you're asking. And my married name is Sadie. Now it's your turn, Mr. Oh, we did this, yeah. Why the handle you got? She's got a couple of ranks herself. Okay. On a chief and so on. One thing, officer. If you do find her, she please go easy on her. She looks around, the air getting colder. She's a good girl. Whatever she's gotten herself mixed up in. Is she now? So you say. I guess we'll be the judge of that. Yeah, well, I mean, you're a nice lady. Uh, and I would like to believe you're a good judge of character, but we've got a whole other list of circumstances mm -hmm. that you might not be aware of. Oh, ho. Explore the coast for science. Heavy wooden doors, more than twice your height, stand shut in front of you. The rectangular sea-worn ornamentation appears in stark contrast to the padlock, carelessly drilled into the wood. The lock turns easily. You hear a click as the shackle pops open. Feels like electricity and a very small piece of nothingness. Let's go. The lieutenant nods at you. As you do, you hear the echo of the doomed commercial area. 
its black holes and dusty machines. Then the feeling passes. A great whoosh of air rushes into the dark innards of the church, as though rushing to fill a great vacuum in the heart of the city. If you're scared, go to church. Take him to church. Hey. Okay. 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 Yeah. Absolutely. A strange stiff stillness fills you as you look ahead. You should walk here, not run. Uh-huh. <laughs> the respect. The huh? respect. <laughs> the grotesque wooden figure looks half finished. Feels like it's trying to become one with the church. Mm-hmm. Well, this is a fucking environment that we've loaded into. Or the fork lighting. Lightning bath pattern you saw outside. Bark beat loops. No, this looks intentional. Some long forgotten style. Gesundheit. <laughs> height. Bless you. Excuse me. Uh, we have a left and right arm shortcut down here that we've never used once. <laughs> have you ever noticed these? I didn't think they would. Be I have never noticed those. Oh. They're for drugs. Well, that would that would explain it. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Blackboard is filled with complex equations. They look recent. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in this room. What the? Yo, Reggie. Fool's Idol? Oh my god. Cold wind blows in the broken gallery. Makes your skin crawl. Two decks of reel-to-reel -reel tape spinning on the empty. Portable Harmon Walshie tape recorder. It's possible it's recording something? Someone siphoning electrical current from the outside into this antenna. The antenna, a Remesker AR-1, is buzzing with energy. Stuff all around this room. A lot going on. A machine stands in the corner, watched over by the figures on the stained glass. Cube window. machine. It's turned on and quivering with soft electricity. There we Absolutely. go. Finally. Another radio computer. And this time it's already turned on. He seems cautious around the machine. These machines sometimes harbor traps, he thinks. Alarm systems and the like. Let's be careful. We should leave. I doubt this place bears any connection to the case. Yes, but this machine looks just like the one in the Doom commercial area. Wait, let me just investigate it. Stop behind the computer. It's also quite similar to the one we have down at the station. Must be the same model. He inspects the machine's framework, careful not to touch anything. The one you saw earlier was the Ream Civic. This is the Ream Prefect. A model number RC7024. Equipped with a Feld mainframe and a Ream compatible interim printer. The Ream Prefect is the governmental version of the commonly used Ream Civic model. Although mostly based on the same technology, the Ream Prefect is equipped with better noise attenuation circuits. All right, hold on. Let's look around first before we do anything. Mm -hmm. Oh, this seems to... Oh, what is this? I don't want to walk there. Yeah, I, I don't want to look, at, or look at it. Yeah. In white, silver, and apricot faience, the young mother of humanism stands above you. A crack runs across her body. She is impossibly tall, oval-faced, and sad. A dark and radiant majesty. Apricots. Worshipped. Mm-hmm. The foundation of the kingdom. Of course. 
This is her innocence, Dolores Day. Uh, nice to meet you. In her arms are a pair of glowing lungs, the clearly visible from underneath her flowing dress. You should kneel. The greatest innocence. You should kneel. No. Cold wind seeps in from the crack in the glass. Snow drifts cover the floorboards at your feet. Above, you feel her multicolored eyes on you, inspecting you. You know, I've played a game or two. Usually these things turn into big Devil May Cry bosses. Yeah. Or Dark Souls bosses. <laughs> the, the appearance of radiance on a, on a stained glass window, you know. That being said, holy shit is that gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's as if under a microscope. Look up. Reminds me of Joe Chen artwork, actually. Uh, very similar in the, the coloring style. I'll look up. The woman looks down at you standing there. She towers among her followers, architects, laymen, courtiers. There is a sad smile on her lips and a glint in her green-blue eye. Of what? Compassion? Remorse? She acknowledges the passing of someone who is still alive. It's compassion. It's remorse. It's mourning. It's not possible to live. As that terrible word passes through your mind, the lieutenant draws an X shake across <sighs> from shoulder to shoulder. <sighs> okay. I see. Your fingertips touch your chest four times as you stand in the apricot colored light of the window. Above you, the woman still smiles, her distant smile, sundered by the crack in the glass. Uh, okay. All right, Kim. This is Dolores Day. The old woman in the village was right. This must be the Dolorean Church of Humanity in Martinez, or the small Pinewood Church in some records. You knew of the place? It's a minor landmark, not easy to find. Most maps misplace it. It was built not long after Revachol's founding, 300 or so years ago, by first-generation settlers. Well, that would even explain his hesitancy to touch the machine over there, right? Like, he's actually... He's in it. Yeah. So... He respects the place. And I respect Kim. On the coast of an uninhabited archipelago, where only animals had roamed before, in the wild reeds... Yeah, you will become a religious person for Kim? No, but I will refrain from dragging my ass across the carpet like a dog with worms. Okay, yeah, I, I would have said that I respect this stuff in a different manner, but sure, sure, no, no ass, no worm ass dogs, okay. What else do you know? <laughs> there used to be seven stiff churches on the coast. They said so, they called them, the seven sisters. Only one remains. The rest were burnt in the revolution or used for building materials. We should be respectful here, although the building appears to be deserted. I do not believe we'll find the instigator here. Something else, perhaps? He looks at the machinery lying around. Something you might need, my friend? Mm. <laughs> Respectful. Is the lieutenant a follower of DeLoreanism? Kim, are you a follower of DeLoreanism? Yes, we all are. Her name, body, and rule are synonymous with humanism. The laws we enforce are DeLorean in origin. We read that book, and we read it on, read it on our own, right? He's not there to reflect. Hmm. Stroke your chin first. I didn't think you were spiritual. I don't like her. She looks like a lever. The woman looks by in silence, smiling enigmatically. It's not spiritual. It's constitutional. The DeLorean system does not demand faith, only accordance. It's kind of like the Sanctus Maximus Populi. <laughs> no, I uh, uh, can appreciate a good, a good fictional religion deeply. 
<laughs> I see what you did there. Okay. So how are we going with this? 97%? How did I know? This is the mother of humanism. Despite the damage you've done to yourself, the title appears lodged in your hippocampus. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. The innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state. Perhaps the most famous human being ever to have lived. No amount of Commodore Red can wipe her sad smile from your brain thing. It has survived the deluge and haunts you still, and will haunt you forever, as it haunts all men. Wait, what exactly is an innocence? I've read a book, but it was fuzzy. The highest category of historic individual, an embodiment of the world spirit. A ruler? A tyrant? In a way, an innocence is elected to the office by the founding party. A precedent that has taken place a mere six times in the entirety of history. The legal system of the Real Belt is built from the ground up to accommodate innocentic rule, should it coincide with our time. An innocence is infallible. The decisions made by one are not decisions. Mm -hmm. They are inevitabilities. Mm -hmm. What would have happened anyway? Only accelerated, packed into decades instead of centuries. An innocence is a continuous compressed event, a sacred human being. It is an honor and a glory to live when one is in office. Most importantly, you get your face put up on the Mount Rushmore. You made it. Yeah. <laughs> they should have had one more on it, you know? Just one more present. The, uh... The Martin the Martinez Kage is <laughs> <laughs> one in office now. No, we are alone. Okay, when did she rule? Three hundred years ago, in the wake of the discovery of this Isola, the Insulindian, by explorers from the continent of Muindi, she is, among other things, the innocence of interisolary travel and the connected world. And if that book was right, she was the one that was not uh, a conqueror? Many things. You know she was a woman of the court, the wife of an influential Marchese, and eventually the principal advisor to Irene La Navigateur, Queen of Seren, modern-day Sir La Clay. Also, that she was gorgeous beyond beauty. But also the founder of moralism. E yes. Draped in ancient sadness. Are you sure you want to remember this bit of historic trivia? Standing under a long slender form like this? Dwarfed? Where is this coming from? Was that the point where... You thought about it, and it's like, yeah, don't think too hard about the large airships floating above the island. Locked and loaded. The past is a silo of sadness fermenting. You should keep away. No, you must know. Right. Better not to go poking any further. Wait. That seems like it would stop. Yeah, this looks like a negative. Uh, I'm gonna go with two. Unless this is a can. Yeah, this is a. That's a mm -hmm. Terribly, women of the court were expected to play both contract bridge and chess sufficiently well to prove an interesting challenge to a man. A simple grasp in matters of philosophy, theology, and science was encouraged. She was, by all means, a kept woman. The goddess of the price stability. <laughs> she made the most of her position in the anti-Delorean court, a court visited by the most prominent thinkers and artists of the day. In secret, she was becoming the era's preeminent philosopher of the state, a scalpel, a piercing gaze. She was an almost preternaturally magnetic and intelligent individual. To her contemporaries, she appeared out of time, a messenger from the future of the species. 
we all fell in love with her, head over heels, even before she was declared an innocence. Her influence was tremendous. How come? It was on her advice that Irene Le Navigateur sponsored a number of voyages into the Pale. A costly, often tragic endeavor, ultimately vindicated by the discovery of the new, new world. The piece of reality you're standing on. She was crowned two years after the first expedition returned, setting in motion what is widely considered the greatest era in history. The DeLorean era. Wow. I don't care. <laughs> wow, indeed. When her innocence was declared and the queen she had advised for years fell on her knees before her, she was so overcome with emotion that her lungs started glowing in her chest. And oh. now we're working on the, oh, the my saint <laughs> misinterpretation then of the piece of art we were looking at. Those are her lungs. Bystanders reported golden filaments lighting the already sunlit chamber around her, clearly visible beneath her dress. Oh yeah, we're twitching. <laughs> Can't stand still. This shit is too wild. Before the greatness of Dolores Day. That is why the lungs are the symbol of love for the cultures of the real belt. I want more. As did we all. The lands of the Mesk and the Occident and even far away Supra Mwindi. Altogether, 21 of the 40 Mundial nations of the time immediately accepted Innocentic rule, even before her crowning. Her crowning? In a city called Advesperaskit in Vesper Messina, her homeland. The name of the city means evening comes, but it happened on a winter's morning with the canals frozen and slush falling out of the sky. She was dressed in a white and pearl dress on an emptied out plaza with the crowd far away. Already, her thirties, the secret servicemen of the innocents, were worried about an assassination attempt. She must have been beautiful. I don't care how she looked. I don't care. It doesn't hurt me. Oh yes, she looked like humanity's young mother. A perfect mother. Insultingly beautiful. It was as if her face and shoulders and hands were covered in a soft down of underfeathers. You know this well. Very well. Was Garl Vinland walking around <laughs> nearby, keeping an eye out? Midwinter snow was beating the cobblestones around her. A small attache of officials stood by as her thirties placed a white gold wreath on her head. The crowning was mostly witnessed by secret servicemen. Then what? One of the men in this secret service killed her. 22 years later, a young man who had come to suspect that Dolores Day was not entirely human, but something else. What? Something that had walked in our midst, watching us stumble for hundreds, if not thousands of years, until it decided to interfere, interfere in the course of our history. We were supposed to come up with this ourselves. The man was reported to have screamed at the innocents. Dolores Day was shot in the chest with a fowling piece eight times. The man, thought to be insane, said he once touched her and her body had been unnaturally warm, like a furnace, and that sometimes, while on duty, he observed her forgetting to breathe for over ten minutes. This inhuman quality was witnessed by many others as well, glowing lungs and all. It is commonly attributed to mass hysteria and religious psychology. Was there something terrifying about her? Terrifying is a term too emotionally charged for your semantic memory, or what remains of it. But terrifying, it's a simple word. She was bad for humanity, and you shouldn't have started thinking about her. You're right. Time to heed the warning. Or... No. Was there something bad about her? I want to know. You already do. 
Although she is often considered to be the greatest human being to ever live, there was something ominous about Dolores Day, constantly surrounded by her thereas. She was the most socially secluded and least self-aware of all the innocences. Some modern thinkers would consider her a war criminal for the campaigns she waged against the Mesk state. Stand corrected. And then there were the resettlement programs. All right, well then, that book uh, was misremembered. The Mesk state tried to detach itself from innocentic rule. Parts of the world were experiencing whiplash from accelerating into secularism. Her mandatory education programs and mass resettlement of upstream Marguerite were problematic as well. Dissenters were suppressed by a military force she called the Army of Humanity. Wow. That's kind of over the top. <laughs> you know, there was a crusade that was called the Children's Crusade. Yeah. And was it like one of like almost non-official ones or something? Oh, it was, was very it official. Version? It was when uh, the Pope at the time believed that the problem that they the reason why they couldn't take Jerusalem was because they weren't sending pure enough, holy enough warriors. So, who more pure and more holy than literally innocent children, who were then marched to Jerusalem in an attempt to take it? That must have gone well. One of many crusades. Yeah. One of many. Suggesting those who fight against it are not part of humanity. She adored chess, yes, but also military war games. Dolores Day often holds a tiny tin soldier between her index finger and thumb in icons such as this. She was also blonde, the blondest woman you have ever seen with green eyes the color of the Pacific, Mare Interregnum. Spoiler alert, it didn't work. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I would have thought. Just, just thought. in case. Okay. Wondering. <laughs> Little is known of her Marchese husband. It's as if he vanished from history after completing his role, which was to introduce Dolores Day to court. In conclusion, yes, there is something lonely, paranoid, and even terrifying that people seldom mention, but feel when they think of her. Hmm. This subtle terror is part of her iconography. Lieutenant Yefreiter, you've stood there for over five minutes. <laughs> the lieutenant's calm voice echoes in the cold air of the church. Uh, yeah. That would be because encyclopedia is not drama or conceptualization yeah. or inland empire. It's encyclopedia. We're learning. That's real. What are you thinking of, if I may ask? 